Hello and welcome back to Toy Thursday with Johnny Tiger. Um, Thursday, and April twenty second, twenty twenty one. It's been a long day, so you'll excuse me if uh, I sound like I am a little bit uh, uh, <laughs> uh, ragged around the edges. Uh, but uh, the show must go on, and we will still uh, be doing Toy Thursday as usual. Um, by the way, you see in front of the camera, uh, some, uh, a couple of figures that, uh, if you've been following on Toy Thursday uh, from the past, you would have recognized them because they have showed up before. Yes, this is, uh, psychotic, bounty hunting, assassinating, detective, father-daughter team called Body Bag. Father is the clown face. The guy in the uh, leather mask, as big and as strong as an elephant, and he is able to throw his knives uh, so hard that supposedly when they hit someone, they hit with the uh, velocity and impact of a cannonball. And he is big, he is mean, and he is very muscular. And standing right next to him is uh, his tiny slip of a daughter, looking like a psychotic teenage cheerleader uh, uh, with ginormous, gigantic, uh, crazily, uh, ridiculously big hmm, bosoms, and uh, dressed rather revealing. Now, since we already showed them before, I'm not going to go into all the details, but suffice to say, uh, the father is a member of the uh, detective, bounty hunting, uh, assassination firm, uh, and one day, suddenly out of the blue, his teenage daughter showed up and wanted to join uh, his uh, enterprise and wanted to become a bounty hunter, and despite of his uh, very strong objection, because despite uh, Clownface being so big and mean and muscular, he does uh, worry a lot for his daughter's safety. So he did not want her to join him, but she wouldn't take no for an answer, and she turned out to be just as scary and as uh, crazy as her dad. Uh, she is deadly with a pistol, and she's deadly with machine gun. She's deadly with shotgun, and she doesn't hesitate uh, to uh, before she pull out something to shoot somebody that uh, look at her the wrong way. Uh, so. They eventually became a very renowned father-daughter uh, bounty hunter team called Body Bag. And that is from the Body Bag comic, from Image comic. Uh, a lot of people never heard of them. A lot of people never heard of the Body Bag comics. I never heard of them until I uh, read up on these action figures. But I really like them. And there's a reason why we're showing them again today, or they're opening the show today. Because... Um, I like uh, some kind of dynamic. I always like some kind of dynamic in uh, character and action figures. And I think the dynamic and all the uh, goings on between parents and children, there's just so much there, especially uh, in the father-daughter team up. I mean, you can just imagine there's going to be a lot of awkward moments, a lot of uh, argument, a lot of fighting, a lot of uh, uh, your everyday mundane stuff. And when you mix that in with uh, assassination, superheroes, bounty hunting, galactic conquest, and all that stuff, there's just so much interesting thing that can happen. So today, we're going to look at uh, some of the very interesting father-daughter team in uh, comic book characters and on my action figure shelf. Let's take the body bag, father and daughter team uh, off screen, and then we will bring in our first action figure of the day. Made in 2013 for the Arkham City, uh, Batman video game. This is Talia Al Ghul. Talia Al Ghul. A lot of people don't know who Talia is, 
But if you are a loyal fan of Batman comic book, then she is no stranger to you. Talia is a long uh, love love affair of Batman. A lot of people think Batman's love affair is with Catwoman. But sometimes, but most of the time, actually Batman is involved with Talia. Uh, Talia is also the mother of the future Batman, the next generation of Batman. She and uh, Batman actually had uh, some uh, rather hot and steamy affair, and uh, she ended up getting pregnant and uh, all, all, all that stuff. Uh, so she is the sometimes enemy, sometimes lover, sometimes ally of Batman. She is the daughter of Ray Shao Ghul, the head of the League of Assassins, a secret organization of assassins that uh, conduct uh, espionage and assassination uh, missions throughout human history. So if you guys can think of a, like a Assassin's Creed, you know, like the, the Illuminati, you know, all those uh, secret organizations that conduct assassinations throughout human history. Well, the League of Assassins is such an organization in Batman comic book. And Talia is the second in command. She is a fantastic martial artist, a sword woman, uh, deadly with guns, deadly with sword. She is a brilliant businesswoman, and she is very good looking, of course. She has tan skin, green eyes, and brown, long brown hair. Until she met Batman, Talia spent most of her life training, 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 and helped run the League of Assassins, hoping that she could gain the approval of her father, Ray Shao Ghul. Um, unfortunately, Ray Shao Ghul was a, a rather sexist individual, and he always uh, complained that he didn't have a son, uh, and he, he, he wanted to leave the League of Assassins to a male heir. He didn't want to leave it to a girl. So, when Talia met Batman, uh, Ray Shao Ghul was so impressed with Batman's physical ability, he wanted Batman to quit being a superhero and come over and become an assassin, and he would leave the entire organization to Batman. Uh, after Talia fell in love with Batman, and when Batman found out that Talia's dad was an evil overlord of the League of Assassins, he tried to leave Talia. He said, even though they love each other, but because Talia's dad was so evil, they could never be together. It would never work. And Talia, this daddy's girl that always, for her whole life, tried her best to impress her dad, to train as hard as she could to be just like her dad, actually offered Batman. As, uh, she said to Batman, if you and I can be together, I will help you kill my dad. That's crazy. I mean, you know, that, that's, that's like ultimate betrayal right there, right? Uh, luckily, Batman has a very strong moral, and he said, no, no, I'm not going to kill your dad, uh, even though he's a bad guy, even though I love you, but that would just be wrong, so I'm not going to, oh, no, wait, no, 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 we're not going to kill your dad. Uh, later, in the Arkham City video game, which is where this action figure is based on, uh, Talia went against her father's wish and secretly assisted Batman uh, defeating her dad in the process, And uh, but in the end, she got killed by the Joker. Uh, Joker actually uh, shot her in the head uh, when she, uh, from, from hiding. So, yeah, very, very sad. Um, this action figure, like I said, was made in 2013. Uh, and it's an action figure depicting Talia from the video game and was made by DC Collectibles. I'm not even going to show you guys her joints because she is already broken. Unfortunately, uh, I broke her today while setting up for the video, which really, really pissed me off. Um, yeah, I, I, I really hate it when things like that happen, you know. Action figure doing just fine on the shelf and then you take them off to do some video and then they break. Yeah. Um, anyway, anyway, uh, super glue to the rescue in a little bit. Uh, but for now, she's holding together well enough for us to do a video. She has a sword in her hand. Uh, that is the same sword 
that in the end of the game, Batman used to defeat uh, Clayface, the arch enemy, when Clayface got became all monstrous and huge and stuff like that. That's, I think that's like one of the very few times that Batman actually used the sword to kill somebody or something. Uh, she is, Celia here, is uh, dressed in a very fetching outfit. She's got a black leather jacket on that is cropped above her belly button and shows her belly button ring, a very toned stomach. Uh, she's wearing a skin-tight black pants and black gloves and black boots. Uh, she's got the old black biker thing going on here. And she's got a sword. She's got a really long curving sword in her hand. And she's in fantastic shape. Uh, with a very nice looking hair. Uh, going down to uh, almost the middle of her back. And this brown hair. In the game she actually has blonde hair. Which is really, really weird. Because uh, she, she is the daughter of a half Arabian, half Chinese assassin. So there's no reason why she look like a white girl but she kind of does she kind of does they, they they made her look a lot like a white girl uh but she's still very good looking and uh, uh definitely a uh, very worthwhile action figure to add to your collection as long as you don't try to move her arms or legs because of some quality control issues a lot of the action figures from dc collectibles back in 2013 will break the arms and legs will fall off, even if you just looked at them wrong. Uh, speaking of uh, Talia, of course, then you know who's coming next. Here then is her father, Ray Shao Gu. Ray Shao Gu is depicted here uh, in his uh, in a very traditional outfit in a plain, simple boots and pants with a yellow trimmed cape behind him, a really high pointy disco collar and an open front uh, tunic uh, for his upper body. He has uh, that really weird looking triangular hairstyle and two little Fu Manchu thing on his chin. Just look like a really classical, really uh, classical villain. And in his left hand, in his left hand, he got his uh, curved sword, his scimitar, uh, and he got golden bracers on his forearm, sort of like looking like a uh, Batman. This is how uh, he was depicted in the uh, animated film Batman vs. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, when the League of Assassins and Ray Shao Gu teamed up with Shredder and the Foot Clan, and they went on a lot of uh, crazy evil deeds, and uh, the Ninja Turtles and Batman have to team up to defeat them. Uh, and Ra's al Ghul was so badass in that film, he fought uh, all four Ninja Turtles single-handed, single, like literally, I'm not even just talking about just by himself, he literally fought them in this pose. The pose you see him in right now, one hand holding the sword and one hand tucked behind his lower back. Like, he fought all four turtles using one hand. That's how badass this guy was. Um, even in the uh, when he go up against Batman throughout their long history, uh, Ray Shao Gu and Batman have fought each other many, many times. And almost every single time they come to physical combat, Ray Shao Gu was able to beat. Batman. Uh, of course, we're talking about Ray Shao Gu, who is probably a thousand years old. Uh, his big secret is that he knows the uh, secret, the power of the Lazarus Pit. And so he has these secret solutions, secret um, uh, liquid that every time he gets killed, that he's a uh, family, a lot of times Talia or uh, his other underlings would take his body and put him in the Lazarus pit in this healing solution and he would uh, rejuvenate and get resurrected. So Ray Shao Gu is a 
ancient, ancient person. He, he is the person that has lived and fought for thousands and thousands of years, accumulated money, accumulated power, accumulated uh, martial art techniques for thousands of years. And he is literally uh, undying. He, he's uh, very, very difficult to defeat. So here we have uh, Rachel Gu, uh, evil overlord of the uh, League of Assassins, uh, standing right beside his uh, darling daughter, Talia. They are from different timelines, different uh, animation, but there you have it. We have a father daughter team. The father assassin daddy and assassin daughter. Father holding the sword in his left hand, daughter holding the sword. In her right hand, and both looking quite fetching in their uh, uh, individual costume. Taking them off stage, we are going to bring in the next person. Uh, give me one second. We just lost Talia. Oh, I hate it when this. Happen. Uh, Talia just fell off the table. Uh. And she just broke another arm. This is just uh, getting better and better. Oh well, if I've got to uh, super glue her anyway, I can do both arms just as well. No. Luckily, luckily for me, I don't really require my action figures to have uh, great articulation or stuff like that. I mean, it's good to have them, but uh, of course, after you super glue them, you won't be able to uh, move their arm anymore. But uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, yeah, as long as they look good on display, that's okay with me. Back to our regularly scheduled program. Poor Taylor, I just got the uh, just fell to pieces, unfortunately. Uh, our next daughter is this little lady over here in her blue and orange outfit uh, with a. Uh, Kind of a uh, pants, tight pants, and uh, chainmail sleeves on her arm, and a little sword tucked in her belt. This is Ravager. Her real name is Rose Wilson. Rose Wilson grew up uh, kind of as an orphan. She never knew who her father was, uh, so she was able to grow up and join the Teen Titans as one of the heroes and learn how to fight alongside other young heroes in the DC Comics. Unfortunately, during one of their missions, she suddenly found out that she was the daughter of Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke, the Terminator. Not that Terminator, not, not, not Arnold Schwarzenegger. But uh, Deathstroke the Terminator, one of the top assassins, one of the uh, most skilled assassins in the entire DC comics. Uh, one of the, those guys that can that, that usually go uh, fighting hand to hand against Batman and always defeat Batman easily. Uh, that's Slade Wilson, and Rose Wilson turned out to be his daughter. Now, knowing that her daughter is the villain, Deathstroke, uh, Rose Wilson left Teen Titans and tried to uh, rejoin her father. Her father gave her uh, a, a trial, a test, to see if she was ready to be an assassin. Her first mission was to assassinate her own older brother. And when she hesitated, uh, Slade Wilson, uh, uh, Deathstroke, 
told her that maybe she wasn't ready after all. Maybe she's too weak because she's a girl. Because otherwise she wouldn't hesitate to murder her own brother. In a fit of fury, uh, Rose Wilson took out a knife and gouged out her own eye just to show her dad. Because her dad is missing an eye as well. So she showed her dad that she could be just like him. She could be just as badass as he. Uh, uh, she really wanted his approval. And after that, Deathstroke decided to tutor her and train her. And he got her the super soldier drug that made him so deadly. So she could have uh, all that super speed and super strength uh, as well. And they became father-daughter assassin team. And Rose Wilson took on the title of Ravager. Now this uh, action figure was, uh, again, made kind of like 2014-2015-ish. Uh, so I got to be really careful. She will break too. Um, so I, just, I don't know if you guys can see. She got a little uh, short sword tucked in her belt here. Um, and she got a display base that she's standing on. The sculptural details on her is actually really, really good. Uh, she's got a very small but uh, very muscular kind of physique. Uh, you look at her, you can kind of tell that she's not fully grown. She's a teenager, but she's a very fit, very well-trained teenager. Uh, definitely befitting an, the title of an assassin. She's wearing a blue mask, and her outfit is mostly, like I said, blue and orange. Uh, she's got wide pants, um, big boots, and skin-tight uh, pants on, on, on her leg, and she got her belt uh, holding up her sword, and she got bracers on her hands, and she got these, uh, her arms are covered in this metal chain style armor that is really textured, really nice, like even if I didn't know what they were, all I have to do is feel them and I know what they're supposed to be. The, the texture is really realistic. And now we bring in the big daddy assassin himself. One of the most notorious, most skilled, most dangerous assassin in the DC universe. Here is Deathstroke standing next to his daughter. Deathstroke, the Terminator, wears black and orange armor, and uh, you can see that one of his eyes is missing. He's blind in one eye, and he's big. He's uh, a tower over his daughter. Uh, I think uh, Slade Wilson, uh, Deathstroke, is like six foot five, and he's a really big guy. He's like uh, DC's version of Marvel's Deadpool. You guys remember Deadpool? We did a lot of episodes on Deadpool. So Slade Wilson Deathstroke is like DC's version of Deadpool. He has superhuman power, super strength, super speed, super healing ability, and he's devastating in hand-to-hand -hand combat, devastating with a sword, devastating with guns, devastating with explosive. He's a pop notch assassin. This action figure of uh, Deathstroke is from Todd McFarlane and shout out to my good friend Wesley. This guy actually was his one of his uh, gift to me for my birthday in 2020 and it's a really well done action figure. Now this guy I don't mind moving because he's very sturdy. Uh, if you guys can see he's got his sword in one hand, the sheath for his sword is on his back. You can actually put the sword in there. And the tie, the long string, hangs from behind his mask, down here on his back. And he's wearing some kind of a tactical armor. He has bullets here, spare ammunition on his shoulder. And he's got some kind of combat harness across his chest. Uh, ignore this knife in his other hand. That, that he actually didn't come with that. I gave him that. I uh, gave him that from one uh, from my uh, uh, assortment of extra weapons because I think he looks silly with empty hands. On his right hip, there's a 
pistol here. Unfortunately, it's a uh, part of the sculpt. It doesn't actually come out. Uh, so I think that's really silly. Like when you make someone like Deathstroke, who is a master of any kind of weapon, you need to give him more than just a sword. But unfortunately, that's all he came with, with one sword. Uh, he got big blocky boots and armor on his leg. And he got more pouches and grenades on the left side uh, of his uh, leg. And there's uh, pouches on his belt, his utility belt. Um, overall, a very imposing, a very uh, sturdy, a very uh, uh, very uh, uh, husky looking action figure. Like I said, by McFarlane, this one came from my good friend Wesley. So now we have uh, Father Deathstroke, uh, Daughter Ravager, standing side by side. And you can really appreciate how much bigger Daddy is next to the Daughter. And these are the Father, Daughter, Assassin Team, Deathstroke and Ravager, a uh, couple of the most deadly uh, assassins in the DC Universe. How would they match up against Helia and Rachel Gu? Well, for the most part, uh, it is usually believed that Deathstroke alone is much more dangerous than Rachel Gu. Uh, because even though Rachel Gu has that uh, rejuvenation and undying thing going for him, he is, for the most part, still a regular human with regular strength, reg regular speed. He, he has a lot of skills. He accumulated techniques and skills for thousands of years, but he, for the most part, he doesn't move uh, like a superhuman. Deathstroke, on the other hand, is completely different level. He's, a, he's like a, a superhuman strength, superhuman speed, and uh, superhuman uh, healing ability, and uh, Generally speaking, it's just a lot more dangerous. Uh, so, that's it for tonight. We have uh, some interesting father-daughter team. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the, the show. I'm going to go fix up Paleo now. Uh, we'll be back again tomorrow for Fitness Friday. For now, have a good night.